your accent gives you away. Peter started calling down curses on himself and swore, I do not know the man. And immediately, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed a second time. And the Lord turned and looked on Peter. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, he will deny me three times. Peter broke down and went out and wept bitterly. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests and the elders and the scribes held the court session with all the Sanhedrin. When they bound him, then they bound him, led him away, and turned him over to Pilate. Then Judas, who had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, was sorry, and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned. I have betrayed innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? That is your affair. Judas threw down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed. He went and hanged himself. The chief priest took the silver pieces and said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury because it is the place of blood. They took counsel and brought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. That is why to this day that field has been called the field of blood. In this way was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, They took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him on whom a price had been set by the children of Israel, and gave them for the potter's field. The word of the Lord. He went out again to the Jews and said to them, 
I find no fault in this man. The chief priest kept laying one charge after another against him, but he answered not a word. Pilate questioned him again, saying, Do you answer nothing? See how many charges they lay against you. Jesus answered him not a word. Pilate was utterly amazed. He said to the chief priest and to the crowd, I find no case against this man. They pressed their charges more vehemently. He stirs up the people, teaching throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee to this place. When Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. When he learned that he belonged in Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him on to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem for those days. When Herod saw Jesus, he was delighted, for he had long wished to see him, because of what he had heard about him, and he hoped to see him do a miracle. He questioned Jesus repeatedly, but he gave him no answer. The chief priests and scribes stood there and vehemently accused him. Herod and his soldiers mocked him. They put a splendid robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate became friends with each other that same day, for before this, they had been at enmity with one another. Pilate then called together the chief priests and the rulers of the people and said to them, You have brought this man before me as one subverting the people. See now, I have examined him before you and have found nothing in this man guilty of any of your charges against him, and neither did Herod, for he sent him back to us. Mark this, he has done nothing worthy of death. I will have him punished and release him. Now at the feast, it was the governor's custom to release to the crowd any one prisoner whom they asked for. They had then a notorious prisoner named Barabbas, who was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection in the city. Pilate knew that it was out of malice that the chief priest handed Jesus over. Therefore he said to them, Do you want me to release for you Barabbas, or Jesus, who is called Christ? The chief priests and elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas to destroy Jesus. Pilate asked them again, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they cried out all together, saying, Away with this man, and release for us Barabbas. While Pilate was sitting in the judgment seat, his wife sent him a message. Do not have anything to do with that man. I have suffered much over him today in a dream. Again, Pilate addressed them, for he wished to release Jesus. He said to them, What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called Christ? What shall I do with him whom you call the King of the Jews? They all cried out, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found no guilt worthy of death in him. I will therefore punish him and let him go. They cried out all the louder, Crucify him. Crucify him. And Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers of the governor led him away into the praetorium. They gathered a whole band of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a purple robe on him. And they had woven a crown of thorns. And they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. They knelt down and did him homage. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I bring him out to you, that you may know I find him not guilty. So Jesus came out, wearing a crown of thorns and a purple robe. Jesus said to them, Behold the man. And the chief priests and the officers saw him, and they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I do not find him guilty. The Jews answered him, we have a law, and by that law he ought to die, because he made himself the son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was more afraid, and went into the judgment hall and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus gave him no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to crucify you, and I have power to release you? Jesus answered, You would not have any power at all over me unless it had been given to you from above. For that reason, he who handed me over to you has the greatest sin. This prompted Pilate to go on trying to release him. But the Jews cried out, If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king 
sets himself against Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was the preparation of the Passover. About the sixth hour, he said to the Jews, Behold your king! They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but rather a riot was underway, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this man. See to it yourselves. Then all the people responded, His blood be on us and on our children. Then Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, gave sentence that it should be as they demanded. He released to them Barabbas, for whom they asked. The man had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder. He had Jesus flogged and then gave him over to their will to be crucified. The soldiers mocked him, stripped him of the purple robe, put his own clothes on him, and led him out to crucify him. This is the word of the Lord. Sitting down, 
They kept watch over him there. Over his head was put the charge against him. Pilate wrote the notice to be put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. This title was read by many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. The chief priest of the Jews then said to Pilate, You should not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. People stood by, watching. Those who passed by delighted him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha, you would destroy the temple and build it in three days. Save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests and the scribes and elders mocked him to one another, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, now come down from the cross, so we may see and believe. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. These who were crucified with him also reviled him. And one of the criminals who hung there with him railed him. Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God? Because you are under the same condemnation. And we indeed justly, for we are getting what we deserve for what we have done. This man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come in into your kingdom. Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Near to the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene, and Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near. He said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And he said to his disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of them that were standing there heard it, they said, He is calling for Elijah. After this, Jesus knew that all things were accomplished. Fulfilling the scripture, he said, I thirst. There was a jar of wine standing there. One of them ran immediately to get a sponge. He filled it with wine, put it on a reed, and held it up to his mouth and gave it to him to drink. Others said, Wait and see if Elijah will come to save him. When Jesus had received the wine, cried out with a loud voice, It is finished. Then he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. The tombs broke open and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs, and after Jesus' resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion, who stood facing him now, saw how he died, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. All the people who had gathered to see the sight, when they saw what had happened, turned away, beating their breasts. Those who had known him, stood in the distance, as also the women who had followed him from Galilee. Among them was Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the younger, and of Joses and Salome, the mother of the sons of Zebedee. It was the day of preparation before the Sabbath, and this was Passover Sabbath. Therefore, so that the body should not remain on the crosses during the Sabbath, the Jews asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the body removed. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who was crucified with them. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead. They did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. One who 
saw it as our witness, and his testimony is true. He knows and he tells the truth. You also may believe. These things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled. Not one of his bones shall be broken. And again, another scripture says, they shall look on him whom they pierced. By this time evening had come, a respected member of the council, Joseph of Arimathea, was one who was looking for the kingdom of God, a good and righteous man who had not consented to their purpose and deed. He was a disciple of Jesus, secretly, for he feared the Jews. Now he took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was astonished that he could be dead already. He called for the centurion and asked him whether Jesus was already dead. When he was assured by the centurion that it was so, Pilate granted Joseph the corpse and commanded that it be given over to him. Joseph brought fine linen and came and took the body of Jesus. Nicodemus came also, bringing a mixture of myrrh and olives, about a hundred pounds of weight. It was he who had first come to Jesus by night. They then took the body of Jesus and wrapped it in linen cloth with the spices, as was the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb where no one had ever been buried. Joseph laid the body in his own new tomb, which had been hewn out of the rock, and rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb, and departed. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joses, were sitting there opposite the sepulchre, and saw where he was laid. Then they returned, prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath day they rested according to the command. On the next day, the day after the preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees went together to Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that what that imposter had said, that while he was still alive, that after three days he would rise again. Therefore, command that the sepulchre be made secure until the third day to stop his disciples from coming and stealing him and saying to the people he had risen from the dead, making the final deception worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go and make it as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. This is the word of the Lord. 